welcome to you all for this episode of Code Talk series. Today, we have with us Ranjit Kumar as our guest speaker to talk on the topic of CAP, Cloud Application Programming Model. A warm welcome to you, Ranjit. Thanks. Thank you so much, Rekha. It's a pleasure to have you here with us to give a brief uh, uh, profile of Ranjit. Ranjit is working as a product owner in the intelligent uh, incident handling team. He has extensive experience with uh, RAP. Uh, RESTful uh, application programming model for ABAP and also CAP cloud application programming model on SAP BTP. Apart from this, he also has experience working on Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform and Azure Platform. Uh, I would like to go on with the first question. So Ranjit, uh, what is CAP and what is Golden Path Principle? Yeah, so basically uh, CAP is a framework, uh, so uh, a strict guideline from SAP to adhere to the guidelines from uh, the golden path principle. So if you talk about the golden path principles, we have two framework basically. So one is from the RAP side, uh, RAP, RESTful Web Programming, and one is on the CAP side. So CAP is basically cloud application programming model mm -hmm. so wherein this is for the open source technology we are creating an uh, application from our side we have to create all the structure where our the presentation layer will go where the service model will go where the data will go but with this framework in place we have everything in place from the framework itself we just have to work on the business logic we don't don't have to worry about the different layers and the architecture so it this is basically a framework of tools and libraries which mm -hmm. which have basically lots of inbuilt architecture inside so we as a developer or development team have to only focus on the development architecture that's where cap comes into the picture and that is mm -hmm. the future golden path principle which sap is recommending for all the open source related development what programming languages are used in cap so there are two programming languages as of now preferred with CAP. By default, it comes the Node.js. Yeah, mm -hmm. along with Node.js, we have Java. So based on the different demand or basically the project structure, uh, customers and the partners in the internal SAP teams, we are choosing. So Node have extra inbuilt feature. For Java, we have to do some more extra development from our side. But by default, Node support uh, CAP support Node.js. And these are two programming languages supported by CAP. Okay, how uh, the architecture uh, pattern or design looks like for CAP? Yeah, so if you talk about the architectural design of CAP, so when we are trying to create a project with the CAP framework, it gives us uh, some ready-made uh, uh, folder structure. One is called app, uh, second one is called DB, and third one is called the SRV. Uh, so app folder is primarily to have all our uh, presentation layer development like UI5 projects can be there and it need not to be like it should have only one UI5 project. It can have n number of UI5 uh, like suppose you take an example of developing an employee application. So it can be uh, just a normal employee or it can be some managers or the leadership team. So you can have two different application with regards to employee. So mm -hmm. all those two projects can be put into the app folder. Then we have the DB uh, where basically uh, out of the box uh, support is there for the HANA cloud database, but it's not like again uh, for database side cap supports for any HANA cloud. It can it again depending upon the customers, partners, internal demand and the requirement cap can go to like Postgres or you can use any other database of your choice. Mm -hmm. But we have used primarily in our project the HANA cloud database. So in the DB folder, we can have all the schema and the data related desktops into that. And when you are testing locally, so CAP support out of the box SQLite database, wherein mm -hmm. we create the CSV file and that CSV file basically contains the entity information and that's where it will be picked by the CAP framework out of the box because you don't have to put any data for manual transformation. It can be transformed into the application locally for the testing because we don't have to write unit testing and mocking of data the previous way we are doing. So in the DB folder, we do all those stuffs and then comes the SRV, the main backbone of the CAP framework where mm -hmm. all the service related architecture falls. You can write your own custom implementation when the server is starting, when the service is getting, some entity is getting called. So all the entity 
which are basically part of your framework for the microservices structure it comes into the service srv folder and it not mm -hmm. no, it's not like we can have only one service it can have a number of services inside that and this is basically based out of the microservice architecture so that the communication can happen the uh, faster in nature and the next mm -hmm. network response time can be faster basically and then yeah that's how it goes basically and if you have mm -hmm to design your de deployment so that part maybe we can come later so the mta.ml mm -hmm. will come for that so this is the high level design and the architecture comes into the cap framework yeah okay so thank you for the uh, overview of the architecture and the next important question is how to connect cap with the uh, s4 hana like in s4 hana we have a private cloud system as well as uh, uh, public cloud system so there should be a definitely a uh, different approach to connect to the two different systems so coming to the public cloud system like how cap connects to it yeah so the moment we are talking about this is one of the questions and this is one of the area which partners company and our customers basically will explore more often than us mm -hmm. So what happens here, like suppose you take an example of S4 on a public cloud where uh, the focus is more towards it. In public cloud side, a uh, customer don't have more controls in terms of migration. Uh, that's uh, automatically mm -hmm. it comes uh, with the keep the core clean concept where the, yeah. But when they would like to connect and they would like to develop something which exists in terms of API in the S4 on a public cloud, take an example of public cloud first. Uh, so all the whitelisted APIs are part of some communication scenario. Uh, so the development team would have delivered those as part of some communication scenario. So customer have to create basically a communication user and expose those uh, communication scenario uh, with their custom communication user and the credentials will be created when they are creating the communication system and communication arrangement and all those things on the communication scenario. Once those credentials are ready, uh, customers can come back to their sub account in the BTP and they can create a destination for that particular API with that particular communication user. Once the destination is ready, uh, what the uh, basically customer have to do, they have to import because you can go into the business accelerator hub. You can find all the whitelisted API for the public cloud and then they have to basically take this EDMX file for that API. Okay, and they can import those EDMX file into their cap project and that will import all the related entity uh, which are there as part of that particular uh, API. Once that mm -hmm. is ready, they have to create uh, basically configure something in the package.json. In the package.json, there are two profiles uh, with which you can run and test your API. Uh, one is the development profile. Other one is the uh, production profile. In the development profile, obviously, when we are running any API, it will ask for the credentials to authenticate on that particular API. Uh, so those information for the credential information we can put into the .env file, which will be local to the developers basically. Either it can be BAS, mm -hmm. Business Application Studio, or they can use the VS Code for the development. And they can connect with the developer profile and it will run fine in the local. And if everything works fine, uh, the customers and the partners developer uh, can deploy into their sub account. And that's where the production profile will come into the picture. And with the destination, okay. those connections and the information will be picked and then the API can be performed. And then as part of their server.js or maybe what happens for every service, you can create one with the same name js file javascript file where you, you can write basically when the read operation will happen because all the crud queue operation we can do on that particular entity if it supports definitely so then all those information if you want to manipulate something during the runtime and all can be taken care of during that operation so it comes to the private cloud and on-premise uh, they can expose those api in terms of a cloud connector so cloud connector okay. we have like a middleware where in mm -hmm. basically you can have one, have one user and you can expose those information for the API in the cloud connector and then the virtual host and virtual port will get created and those information again can be pulled into the destination and within with that destination they can connect with the same mechanism the only things comes here in the public cloud we have the communication scenario on top of that we create the communication arrangement user and all those things in the uh, and then that can be exposed in the outside world to consumption when it comes to mm -hmm. the private cloud then it comes the cloud connector with the help of that we can create basically the destination and then the rest of the things will fall back the same way yeah okay 
Yeah, thank you for uh, the detailed explanation, Ranjit. And uh, when we're developing applications, especially the cloud applications, uh, security is a paramount concept that has to be handled. Uh, so in uh, with respect to CAP, how you are securing the applications, the security concepts? Yeah, definitely. Uh, security is very uh, important part of any development, any portfolio when it comes to productive application development. Uh, so the best part of CAP, as I was mentioning in the start of our conversation, CAP is a framework. It gives many libraries and many tools out of the box, wherein we as a developer have to only focus on the business logic. Similarly, mm -hmm. to, similar to that fashion, uh, before when we were doing cloud native development in the legacy way of development, it was like too much overhead was there on the development team to basically organize their security part, authorization part basically. Now what happens, uh, we have this access security.json file. So here comes the concept of role, basically a scope, then the role template and the role collection. But to drive this information in the access security.json, what happens, there are different annotations uh, given from the CAF framework. We can go into our service, uh, the serv whatever the file we have created for the microservice. In that only we can put the annotation whether do we want what sort of restriction we want to give. So if you give the annotation like restrict a star, what happens? It will give all the scope, whatever is attached in our access security node JSON. When we want to attach a scope, uh, we can give at the rate restriction. And suppose you have a chairperson or you have an admin. So those scope you can attach. And then you generate an access security. There are basically a couple of uh, commands given from cap. When you run those commands to generate the access security, it will generate out of the box the scope template and the role collection and it will attach all those things for your service. So which part of the service will be accessible for which particular user when we deploy basically these role collection gets created in our sub account and we can then control who you which which is the that particular user needs an admin role which is the particular user needs a chairperson role or which particular user needs only the view sort of access. So that's how we control the whole portfolio of the mm -hmm. roles and the collection and how we can achieve that security. So here with the annotation, we can achieve most of the things out of the box with the cap again. Yeah. And whichever the project I have worked, it was out like very flexible in terms of security and everything is taken care of by the cap framework automatically out of the box. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, could you please name some of the projects uh, you have worked using this uh, cap tools, frameworks and technologies? Yeah, so these are basically there are some internal projects which I have worked for uh, uh, for our SAP Labs India initiatives like uh, I have worked for a project called Hive Portal. Uh, Hive Portal mm -hmm. is basically to manage uh, all the internal events and all those things. So that's one of okay. the projects which I have worked and that is based on the CAP implementation and that's a single tenant application. And this recent one which I'm working is like the champion circle uh, which is basically will, will manage all the champions across the labs india who is contributing what and based on that basically there is a program to recognize our employee internally so these are the two projects uh, so the current one i am working in the champion circle and in past i worked with the hive initiative yeah so these are the two projects i have worked on okay yeah that sounds uh, really interesting uh, just to summarize this uh, code talk uh, is a framework in order to develop enterprise applications. Mainly it's uh, open source. It supports open source languages like uh, Java, JavaScript, Node.js uh, libraries in order to develop the application and uh, uh, application from scratch. Uh, can be developed or uh, the existing applications, for example, from the SAP systems like uh, SAP S4 HANA system, private cloud, as well as public cloud, those features and uh, functionality can be extended. And many things come from out of the box and we need not to do everything from scratch. There are services coming from the BTP, uh, which supports the application development. As developers, we have to focus mainly on the business logic or the application logic. And we, know, we need not to worry much about the uh, logistics of the software application. Um, 
thank you everybody for watching this uh, code talk i hope uh, it gave some insights uh, for you to get started with the uh, cap development and uh, we also provide some uh, resources uh, for you to learn more about uh, cap in the description do check this out and uh, i wish you a great day ahead thank you thanks everybody thank you deka bye 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 bye